Hi guys, Ure Ben here again, and today I was thinking about uh, what video I wanted to do and I didn't have anything particular in mind, so what I thought of doing is something that I like to watch when, I, you know, when I'm not sure what film to pick up or what uh, film to watch. I sort of browse through YouTube and look at top 10 lists or reviews by people or recommendations at films that I maybe haven't seen and I think sound interesting. So what I'm going to do today is that I'm going to show you five films that I think are really good and sort of recommend them to you. If you've seen them, that's great. If you haven't and you're interested in them, give them a watch. And if you, if you uh, enjoy them, just let me know. So yeah, something different today, but I hope you enjoy it. And if you haven't seen any of these films, I highly recommend them. So the first one is The Machinist. Okay, I know the title here is in Spanish because I bought it here in Spain, but it's The Machinist. A 2004 psychological thriller starring Christian Bale. If you have seen it, you all know that Christian Bale gives her one of his best performances ever. And it's an amazing film. Uh, yeah, it's about Christian Bale, who's a guy called Trevor, who works in a, in a factory. And he's got insomnia. And uh, his insomnia sort of uh, gets out of control and uh, causes anorexia and causes a lot of problems. And uh, he sort of causes an accident at work. And his co-workers sort of turn against him because they don't trust him anymore. And it's literally about his life in a, uh, you know, in a downward spiral due to the insomnia he has. And also him finding himself. And, uh, you know, I can't tell you much about the film without sort of giving the plot away. But it's an amazing psychological thriller. It stars Christian Bale, who gives an amazing performance. If you haven't seen it, you'll be amazed at, you know, his physical state in this film. I think, he had to, I think he had to lose about 35 kilos or something. You know, he really goes down to, I don't know how much he weighs in this film. It's actually amazing. Some scenes you see him in, you have, you have to actually pause it just, you know, just to believe that it's real. And it's just amazing to see him. He really sort of gives it all in this uh, performance. And the reason I recommend it is because a lot of people don't really talk about it. It's an amazing film. It's written really well. The script is absolutely amazing. The dialogue in the film is amazing. And uh, people don't talk about it a lot. And Christian Bale, you know, everyone loves Christian Bale. They talk about Batman and uh, all his other great performances. And they sort of skip over this one. I think it's probably his best performance ever. So Christian Bale, if you enjoy him, definitely check out The Machinist. A great film from 2004. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes, you know, a lot of my films, I'll check on Rotten Tomatoes. It's a website, if you don't know. And uh, it was given 77%, so that's quite high grade. And uh, yeah, Machinist, check that out. Okay, the next film in my list was one that got 79% on Rotten Tomatoes, so 2% more. It's a film that's uh, quite recent. It's uh, 2012, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. And it stars Liam Neeson, and it is The Grey. It's an amazing film. This has, you know, a couple of years ago people did pick it up quite a lot and it's going for cheap on Amazon, but, you know, people don't really talk about it. It wasn't uh, one of these films that, you know, everyone sort of picked up and things like that. It's just a really interesting film, The Grey. Uh, the only uh, sort of actor of note is uh, Liam Neeson, who's one of my favourite actors. He does really well in this. And basically it's about uh, a loner who works in Alaska and his job is to protect the workers in a, I think it's an oil rig an oil rig up in Alaska, and he has to protect them from wolves, you know, he's uh, an expert uh, sniper, sort of a uh, hunter, and his job is to sort of lie out in the snow and protect uh, the workers who are working outside from uh, wolf attacks in Alaska. And uh, basically, coming back, I think, on the, when they do the, the turnover, the shift turnover, their plane, their plane crashes somewhere in, the, in Alaska, and it's basically about him and a, a small group of survivors have to try and uh, make it out of, uh, you know, the snowy mountains while they're being chased by a pack of wolves. Uh, the Grey, uh, I'm not actually sure what it refers to because during the whole film, obviously, it's snowing and, uh, you know, the sky is all grey and cloudy. But it's uh, also related to a sort of poem that's in the film. I don't want to give too much away. And obviously, they're being chased by wolves and the, the species of wolf is the grey wolf. So it sort of uh, makes the grey sort of related to all of those things, but it's a really good film. Liam Neeson gives a great performance, one of his best, and it's just, you know, one of these, you know, really, really makes you feel, uh, you know, when you're watching it, you're sort of always thinking, what would I do when, in this situation? Oh, you shouldn't have done that, I would do that. You know, you really get involved in the film, and it's, I think it's about an hour and 40 minutes long, but to me it seemed like half an hour, it went by so fast, and there's some really good scenes in it, and the wolves, they look they're so well done. There's a couple of scenes where you think, whoa, that's not a real wolf, but you know, it's really difficult to do the way they did it. 
and it's just an amazing film and uh, Liam Neeson is in it the whole way through I think he must be 98% of the time the camera is literally on him and he gives a great performance a lot of people had some problems with the endings I think there are two different endings and uh, on here you can actually uh, see the other ending but I enjoy both of them and it's a great film so if you haven't seen The Grey definitely take it out uh, definitely check it out sorry 2012 film starring Liam Neeson okay the third one I'm going to check out. Sorry, I know the title is in uh, Spanish, but I'm going to tell you the, sp the title in English. It's Doubt, and this stars, as you can see there, Meryl Streep, uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman, and Amy Adams. And the these three actors for this film, they're actually all nominated for Oscars. Uh, they didn't win, but it's just uh, you know strange to see three main actors in a film being nominated for three different uh, sort of prizes in the Oscars. So yeah, an amazing film. Uh, if you haven't seen it, literally, it's, it's about. Uh, it's very difficult to explain the plot without giving it away. But it, Meryl Streep's a nun, and Amy Adams uh, too. She's a new nun, and uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman's the father in a parish. And it's literally about they've got a school, and they sort of obviously teach young children, and something happens uh, during the year that uh, causes <laughs> I don't know some doubts, and it's just. Such a good film. Philip Seymour Hoffman and Meryl Streep give great performances. The dialogue in this film is absolutely amazing. You know, I've watched it about five or six times and I just love it. And, you know, it's literally these three characters that's just always sort of talking, uh, have dialogue scenes together and you're just glued to the screen. It's absolutely amazing. And I can't believe uh, people don't talk about this film more because it's just a film that I really enjoy. And, uh, yeah, it gives you something to talk about and also something to think about. But obviously, as the title says, uh, doubt during the whole film, you're not sure what's happening, and it's just uh, you know, just really, really makes you think, and it's just a great, a great film. And obviously, Philip Seymour Hoffman, rest in peace, gives an amazing performance. So yeah, if you haven't seen the doubt, check it out. Oh yeah, and 78% uh, on Rotten Tomatoes. So yeah, that's the 2008 film Doubt. Okay, the next one is one of my personal favourites. I'm sure a lot of people have. Uh, heard about this film but it's once again it's a film that people don't talk about much and I really enjoy it and it's The Last King of Scotland and it's an absolutely amazing film Forrest Whitaker is one of my favourite actors he doesn't really get uh, main roles uh, you know protagonist roles in films I think uh, recently I haven't seen it but he did Butler I think he was uh, he had a, quite a, a big role in that but yeah The Last King of Scotland and it also stars I, can't, I can never remember his name McAvoy McAvoy. I've got it written down here. Yeah, James McAvoy, who's uh, obviously, if you can see him here, he's out of X Men. Yeah, they both do really well in this film. And basically, it's about uh, a dictator in Uganda, and uh, James McAvoy is a doctor. And when he's young, he travels to Africa thinking that, uh, you know, he wants to help people out, you know, with malaria and things like that. And something happens where he sort of meets this dictator, and the dictator sort of likes him. And uh, he's, you know, converted, he's uh, sort of hired or I don't know. Uh, he's, well, anyway, James McAvoy becomes his uh, personal doctor. And at first everything seems nice, but bit by bit, uh, James McAvoy sort of realises that this dictator is a bit fascist and over the top and he's sort of trapped. And it's just literally about the story of him trying to uh, protect himself while keeping the dictator happy. And uh, also, it, it shows you all the, the things that this dictator did to the population, all the people that he disliked and things like that. So it's a really shocking film, you know. If you if you don't like uh, seeing you know mass uh, mass killings and things like that, I don't know if it, this will be one for you. But the story is actually amazing. It's based on a true story, and the ending is absolutely amazing. Shocking, but amazing. So yeah, if you haven't seen The Last King of Scotland, definitely check it out. Even if uh, you just want to see it just for uh, Forrest Whitaker's uh, performance because he does really well and uh, if you watch the extras if you pick it up you'll see you know he really gives a great performance and tries really hard to be you know the same as the dictator so yeah The Last King of Scotland uh, this received 87% on Rotten Tomatoes so yeah a great drama film from 2006 okay my last recommendation is a film uh, it's an old film it also stars Philip Seymour Hoffman but Philip Seymour Hoffman in this I think he's about 18 or 19, so when you see him, you know, you're really sort of shocked by it. So it's a 1992 film, so it's a bit old, but it stars one of my favourite actors, Al Pacino, and it's Scent of a Woman. If you haven't seen this film, you really do have to check it out. It's 
absolutely amazing. Uh, on Rotten Tomatoes, it got 88%. So yeah, it's a very highly, uh, uh, I don't know, praised film. And Al Pacino actually won uh, an Oscar for this for Best Actor. So absolutely amazing. Basically, the plot is about uh, a retired colonel from the army, and he's blind. And uh, Chris O'Connell stars in it. I don't know if you can... It's not actually only you can see him there. He's with him. There, Chris O'Connell is a student, and uh, during the summer he wants to make a, a little bit of money, and uh, he sort of works... He goes to a house to look after Al Pacino while his daughter... I think it's his daughter. It might be his niece goes on holiday and obviously can't be left alone because he's blind. So he goes there for the summer to look after him. But uh, Al Pacino's got a bit of a surprise for this kid and decides to sort of take him to places that he wants to go to. And Chris O'Donnell, in, 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 instead of looking after him, sort of uh, tries to keep him out of trouble. And it's actually an amazing film. The end, the end scene of this film, I must have seen it about a hundred times. You know, I've, sometimes I just put the film in just to see the last scene. So I definitely recommend it. Uh, I don't want to give too much away because the, it's... It's difficult to explain the plot without giving it away, but Al Pacino gives a great performance of this blind colonel. Chris O'Donnell does really well too. And just the story and the plot, and also Philip Seymour Hoffman's in it, and I really like him as an actor, so yeah. Scent of a Woman, great film. A bit older, 1992, but it's well worth a watch if you haven't seen it. Okay, so those are five recommendations. I'm sure you've seen a few of them, but if you haven't, check them out. So we have uh, The Last King of Scotland, Doubt, The Grey... The Machinist and Scent of a Woman. So yeah, those three, those five, sorry. Highly recommended. If you do end up checking out any of these films, please let me down, uh, let me know down below what you thought. And if you've already seen them, also let me know down below what you thought of them. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click on like. And uh, I would love to see uh, other YouTubers doing the sort of thing, recommending, uh, you know, five of their, their favourite films or their less known films that they really enjoy, because I really enjoy seeing those sort of videos. Okay, so take care, guys.